Welcome back. We're still working on project number two for Math 033, the Yummy Graphs. This time we're going to be taking a look at making some different kind of graphs. Now that we've made a pie chart, we have a sense of what's required to actually make a graph in Excel. So what we're asked to do next is a frequency bar chart for one of the packages of candy. And so since we used uh, package number one last time, we're going to go ahead and use package number two this time. So I'm going to slide this guy out of the way. And so I'm going to select the information that I need in order to make the chart. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to save because I always forget to save the file. So I go up here, the little disk icon in the upper corner, I click on save and I feel a lot better. And before I go too far here, I'm going to shrink this down. I can shrink down the size of the graph. And hey, there's those leader lines that I mentioned before. Okay, so as before, I'm going to highlight my information. But I'm going to cheat a little bit, actually, and I'm going to highlight the color and frequency uh, as well, That those uh, title uh, header cells as well. And so when I say insert, and I'm going to insert a graph, and I want it to be a column, chart. That's what uh, Excel calls bar charts and histograms. It calls them column charts. And the very first one, the 2D column chart, is what I want to include here. And so I click on that and hey, what do you know? I wind up with a graph. Lovely. Yay. Um, it's worth noting that this graph, my particular numbers automatically have a zero at the bottom. Uh, but that's not always going to be the case, depending on how big your uh, candy is, uh, how large your, your packages are. So what you may want to do is click uh, over here on the actual axis on these labels. And if you just right click, after you've clicked on it, you right click and we should be able to go to format axis. You can always force the minimum to be fixed at zero. And so by doing that, you're basically guaranteeing that the bottom of your graph down here, the bottom of your graph is at zero. If you don't do that, it's possible that Excel will make your graph kind of fit um, so that you're kind of zoomed in on the top of the bars, which is actually really bad to do statistically because it might actually make your graph look um, inappropriate. It may make the graph look like the values for your particular colors are closer than they actually are or further apart for that matter. So uh, once you've got your uh, axis set, then it's just a question of going through and changing uh, the color if you want to do that. Oh, and by the way, you could change the um, the actual chart title. You can either double click in here and type and say this would be the uh, frequency bar chart for package number two. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, you can always go into layout and tell it that you don't want a legend. There we go. Turn off the legend. And then you wind up with um, a bar chart that looks well, pretty familiar. So, uh, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is just take a second and change these colors so that they reflect uh, what they're supposed to look like. So hold on while I do that. Ta-da! And by the magic of hitting the pause button on record, I now have a color-coded chart that I can kind of drag around as needed. And the nice thing about this is that I can kind of move these charts. I can stack them one on top of each other, and that's not a big deal. Uh, the other thing that I can do if I'm in there, if I want to change some things, I could change the, the line features, the shape of the outline. I could make it a, a thicker outline around the outside of the uh, actual chart, right, by doing that. But I don't have to. Um, having the colors reflect the, the colors of the candy is pretty good. So I'm going to hit save, and then we're going to tackle the next part which according to this is a frequency Pareto chart for one of the packages of the candy. Okay, so we're gonna go back into our Excel file and we're gonna make a frequency Pareto chart. And if you've uh, been through this section already in the notes, then you know what a Pareto chart is. It's really a bar chart, but 
organized in such a way that each one of the bars kind of step down in order of highest to lowest frequency. So basically I have to rearrange my data. I have to move the red so that it's over here. The next one would be yellow. The next one would be green. The next one would be blue. And then orange would be the very last one. And so that's what I have to do. So what I'm going to do here is grab my data back here in the Excel file. I'm going to continue on with package two. I'm going to grab all of this information here, package two, color, frequency, all the way down. I'm just not going to grab the total because that's not terribly important for me right now. I'm going to copy this by hitting control C, or you can go up here and click on, uh, well, you wouldn't want to click on cut. You can uh, go up here and do, hmm, I don't know what the, the tab here would be. Eh, just hit control C and you copy it once you've highlighted it and then you can step down here I'm going to put it right underneath this. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit Boop. And I'm going to paste it right here. So I'm going to either right click and hit paste Just like this Boop. or you can hit um, Put your cursor where you want it to be and hit control V V for paste. Don't ask me. I don't know why it is. Uh, but notice it says the exact same information, but I'm now going to change this from package number two. I'm going to change this to package number two Pareto data because we're going to turn this into uh, Pareto chart data. So you'll notice I've got um, my order is exactly the same as it was before, but what I really want is for each one of these colors to be arranged in such a, a way that the highest frequency comes first and then the next highest and then the next highest. So what I really want to do is sort this information right here, sort the frequency. So I'm going to highlight my frequencies for this chart. And then I'm going to, uh, if you click on uh, right click, you can go up here and say sort and sort smallest to largest. We want small, uh, excuse me, largest to smallest. And so if you click on that, it automatically jumps up with a little warning and says, well, wait a minute, you've got these data values right next to names, the names of the colors. Do you want to expand the selection to include the names? That means not only will it sort the frequencies, but it'll attach itself to the color. And that is totally what we want it to do. We want to expand the selection. So just say sort and voila, take a look at what happened. We've got now brown is the highest frequency. The next highest is red. The next highest is yellow. The next highest is green, all the way down to the very lowest frequency, which is orange. And you can verify th those numbers are the same, attached to the same colors here. And that's what we want. So the good news is there's nothing special about the Pareto chart once you've sorted your data. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, click and drag and highlight my table, the information that I want. And then I'm going to go through the process as before for inserting a column graph that's going to look very similar to what I had before. But now all I need to do is change the uh, the chart title, get rid of the um, uh, legend, and change the colors. So that's what I'm going to do real quick on my graph. And with a little bit of effort, ta-da, I now have a Pareto chart for my package number two. And you'll notice that it's sorted in kind of a step-down fashion. If two of the colors had the exact same frequency, that's okay. The Pareto chart would just show a straight, you know, kind of straight line from one to the next, and then it would drop down. Um, you'll also notice that my chart looks a lot like my frequency bar chart for package number two. It's just in a different order. And so I can kind of shrink this down and you'll see that they're, they're essentially the same graph. They're just in different order. And of course we can do this because these colors, there's nothing inherent about the color, the order of the color. They just were randomly in this order when I sorted my data. And this makes it ordered for a different purpose. So as I did before, I'm going to kind of drag this graph over and sort of stack it on top of this one. So you can see all my graphs are right there. And now, just because I'm always going to forget to do it, I'm going to click on Save one more time. 
and then I'm going to figure out okay what's coming up next the last one is a side-by-side -side relative frequency bar chart for both packages of candy at the same time okay so this one's going to take a little bit more effort and I'm going to do that one in the next video so hang on and I'll be right back <laughs>